Hello my friends, welcome to one more video of this series, How to Break Into. But today, we're going to be talking to Santi Adavani, co-founder and CTO of Rocket ML. We're going to be talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. So if you want to understand how to become a data scientist, this video is for you. We're going to be talking about education, his perspective about certifications, very interesting topic to discuss with him and also the importance to have a mentor guiding you into your path guys if you like this content don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future let's go santi thank you very much for for accepting be here in my channel today it's a, it's a pleasure to have you the founder of uh, Rocket ML. Uh, most of my audience already know Rocket ML. One of my first guests was Vinay to talk. We talk a lot about good things about machine learning. It was a great conversation. But today I would like to discuss with you for those who want to start on this new path or for those who want to migrate from another area uh, how we can break into machine learning and artificial intelligence industry. But before anything, Santi, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself, if you will. Sure. Uh, it's great to be here, Rodrigo. Thanks for inviting me to chat with you. Uh, about myself, I'm one of the founders and uh, CTO of uh, RocketML. Uh, we are a startup company trying to help data scientists uh, get maximum out of their time, increase their productivity, and be their best selves uh, to deliver for their organizations. And to do that, we've built multiple products uh, that are 10 times better than the existing ones. And before uh, starting RocketML, I was a data scientist at Intel, where I've seen firsthand how data science and machine learning can help companies save hundreds of millions of dollars if, if done, done right. And from my education, I, I got my PhD in computational sciences and engineering from uh, UPenn. And I got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from, uh, from India. So that, that's my background. That's amazing. Uh, a great background, a lot of experience, Santi. That's why I asked you to be my guest to talk about this. It's such a nice topic. And as you mentioned, Santi, uh, you know how important it is uh, the data science to organizations to increase revenue, to decrease costs. Wow. I believe that this awareness is already there, right? Wow. Everyone is talking about AI, machine learning for quite some time. So yeah. this has uh, increased that a lot of people want to go and, and, and become a data scientist. Wow. So my first question to you, Santi, when you're talking about education, right, educational wise, what would be your recommendation for someone who wants to, as I said at the beginning, either migrate to, to, to become a data scientist or for those who are, okay, I'm going to get some, I'm going to the college to become a data scientist, I'm going to do some courses, what would be the correct path uh, from an education perspective for someone who wants to go into this industry. Absolutely. So let me break the break the question into two, right? Folks who are completely new, they're just starting their education or during the process of uh, finding a job or finding their first job. And uh, the second part of the question is folks who are experienced trying to break into data science. So let's tackle the first question that is somebody who is just doing their uh, education or trying to graduate. So at a very high level, I would say there are two pieces that uh, anybody trying to get in needs to understand. One is the, the technical skills and equally important are the soft skills. And within the technical skills, there are primarily three components that uh, I recommend folks who, who talk to me. One is uh, the basics. Basics meaning understanding of statistics, linear algebra, probability, and the basics of machine learning itself, that is the theory and the aspects of how to do machine learning and how to deal with data. The second aspect is, uh, is programming. 
you have to be a decent programmer. I won't say you have to be an excellent programmer, but you need to understand the basics of computer science, basics of uh, software engineering, all at the basics level to be a good data scientist. Today, I see a lot of folks uh, trying to break into machine learning, spinning up a Jupyter notebook, trying to write a lot of stuff there and think themselves as data scientists. Sure, they can get through uh, maybe a, a good tutorial, but to actually work in a company and to deliver value, you need to think logically. So that is the second aspect. The third aspect of it is understanding of infrastructure, right? So when I say understanding of infrastructure, when you're working on your laptop, you know where your files are, you know, you have a small SQL like database, you know where things are. But once you work in a company, the, the, the infrastructure is so fragmented, it's so heterogeneous. So a basic understanding of, uh, of where the data can be and how the data looks is the third aspect that is important. So while the first one, uh, linear algebra, all those things are covered by in a lot of courses, the software engineering and the infrastructure pieces are not necessarily well understood. And anybody who cracks those two, I think will have a very good future in this data science area. That's, that, that's a very good comment, Santi. So uh, as per what you're saying, a specific curriculum focus wow. on the data science, to become a data science is the most uh, effective way to become one, right? That's to get the, right. the correct courses. Uh, as we know, uh, a lot of people likes to either read books or take online courses, but at least to have these fundamentals, right? As a computer science, as a programmer, to, wow. to be able to become one. But of That's course, right. uh, super important to, to become a data scientist is to have practice. We have all this, this balance, right? Experience yeah. with no experience, giving the opportunity and these kind of things. So okay. how can one get experienced enough to land the first job as a data scientist? Um, I would say work on the problems that you're most passionate about. So if you look at look in the industry, right? The, the, the FinTech industry, is doing really well and they're hiring a lot of people. The biotech industry is, is almost like it's at, the, at that inflection point where they're hiring a lot of people. So if you look at it, there is no dearth of opportunities out there. So to land a job, you need to demonstrate to your potential employer that you have thought through their problems. So I wouldn't go find a job as a thing of as a machine learning engineer, but how can I solve this company's problem? Mm -hmm. And can I show them that I've solved a similar problem in their area is the best way to crack uh, any job. So don't go with hundred courses or certifications, understand the industry, understand the problem, solve one or two problems in that industry, and then go find a job in that industry. That, oh, oh, you mean, go with a portfolio of problems already solved by you to show you okay uh, in, that you have this practice because one one good one good concept that i like a lot is crowdsourcing wow. and we have we have platforms like top coder not sure if you are familiarized with this yeah. one Santi. Uh -huh. and yeah. where we have a lot of uh challenges that anyone can okay i'm gonna grab this challenge i'm gonna solve uh at the end, I can earn some money. So uh -huh. I think this could be like a good way, a good path to start, uh -huh. right? Uh, gaining that experience and uh -huh. show to the, the potential employers that you have the, you are capable to solve their issues. Absolutely, absolutely. So there are definitely a, a, a set of horizontal skills that are generic for any job, right? Like coding basic understanding of data structures and computer science. And I think everybody needs to pass the basic threshold to excel because everybody is also doing the same thing to excel and be to stand out in your job search, doing something very relevant for the industry would, would also help somebody land a good job. That's a very good point, Santi. Because uh, when you're talking about education, it was a couple wow. of months ago, actually, when I saw that, that uh -huh. Elon Musk mentioned, right? Uh -huh. They don't need anyone. Nobody needs a a a, a college uh, graduation to work in this in this industry. Uh -huh. 
it become Sorry. like wow yeah. Elon Musk say something like that but this is not the way I think I think there are very uh, amazing benefits to go to college to go to the university of course yeah. technology right code language is uh -huh. something that is gonna change uh, the future yeah. many 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 times so everyone needs uh -huh. to start recycling themselves but it's not the fact uh -huh. not to go to university or, or college it's not uh -huh. a, 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 a bad thing that's perfect uh -huh. Uh -huh. Gl glad to hear that you agree with me uh, uh -huh. but Santi uh, this is something that I don't know actually uh, uh -huh. when you're talking about certifications we know that we have very good certification, for example, if you're talking about information security, right? The CIA or CISSP for the management level. Do we have anything similar to AI in machine learning industry? Yeah, I mean, I'm personally not a big fan of the certifications. Let me be honest with you on that. Um, because it, now it kind of become a... Um, um, fashion business right there is every there is a new certification coming from a new company and people are trying to chase after that i'm a big proponent of fundamentals and there are a few places where you can actually get good understanding of fundamentals one is like you're saying do a good course or a, or a go for a degree in data science or something in a good university that may not be affordable for a lot of folks the next best thing is go after these really good uh, um, courses, say in Coursera or Udemy, right? But that is only, I would say, 10% of the journey because that is only giving you the first uh, uh, elements of how to think or what are the basics of machine learning. But it is all practice, 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 right? And nothing can replace practice. No certification can replace somebody actually solving a problem. And it's always better to find a problem that you are interested in and think of all these tools as something that can help solve the problem, but not the other way around. Uh, because today when I talk to a lot of upcoming machine learning folks, they're chasing after a brand new tool, brand new open source software that was released last week. There is no way to catch up to all these things. Every, new, every week there is a new open source library coming up. So start with a problem, start with fundamentals, and practice, 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 and there's nothing that can replace, uh, uh, no certification can replace uh, that, that formula. I agree. I agree, Santi. But talking about practice, this is always something that is hard for everyone, right? Because oh. uh, where can I go and practice enough to get the experience that I need to land that dream job? We talk yeah. about top coder, one, one chance, uh, one way to get this practice. Uh, what else you would recommend to someone to go to get this practice? So uh, there are there is the Skaggle that would be the first place I would recommend somebody who's getting into the field go right. That is so because Skaggle has this uh, entire repository of data sets, problems, and industries that are interested in those problems, along with all the notebooks that somebody has already put together for them to actually try out. So if somebody is trying to get into the field, I would say, go look what people did. What are the problems? How are they actually talking about it as a first step? And then participate in some competitions and get better at it. And that would get them 50% of the way. <laughs> uh, and, and beyond that, I would say, find a, an entry job, right? Or find an internship. Internships are a great way to break into the industry because there are a lot of companies out there looking for interns. They're not really sure whether they want to invest in data science, go find them and get, do an internship. So there is, so you, that's how you practice and, and become a good data scientist. That's very, that's very good. But we talk about uh, a lot about technical skills, right? Uh -huh. I, I don't want to call hard skills. It's just uh -huh. because I think uh, this differentiation between hard and soft skills is not the right one to do. Let's talk about technical skills and power skills, right? Uh -huh. and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we know as a data scientist, you do have to have a lot of power skills, right? Yeah, absolutely. To, yeah. to negotiation, to, to selling. Uh -huh. And 
of course, to understand empathy, to understand the business uh, business pain, so you can wow. try to and, and solve that pain to to your organization. Uh, right. And power skills is something that we need constantly to be uh, evolving. Uh -huh. Where someone can get the power skills training to uh -huh. land a, a job as a data scientist. So let me, so there are two skills that at least I look for when, when uh, we hire data scientists or when we are hiring interns. One is the ability to um, communicate, right? Actually speak clearly and, and explain what they're doing. The other skill is listening skills. And if somebody, if somebody had asked me to pick one of these two, I would say it's always listening skills, especially in the early stage of the career. Because when you're working with, uh, with industry experts and domain experts, you may have some machine learning skills, but that's only 20% of the way, but 80% of your work is understanding the domain. So, and listening skills, I think can be practiced anywhere. <laughs> you don't need to go with like, listen to people and, and not interrupt and actually understand what they're seeing is I think is a is a web, secret weapon that a data scientist can can build without spending a penny. <laughs> so that that I would that would be my recommendation. Uh, no, that's a very good point, uh, Santi. And we know I, I have a last question to you. Wow. A lot of industry, especially uh, cybersecurity, for example, uh, where within the organization, you have uh, this whole structure dedicated to cybersecurity. And you have the, the CISO, sometimes the CISO, the CIO uh, slash CISO, uh, and the importance to have a mentor for you to go wow. and, and, and have a good track on your yeah. career. What, wow. what do you think uh, the importance to have a mentor, right, wow. to to folks that wants to become a data scientist, do you think that for these industries it is relevant to be to to look for a mentor? I think so. It's absolutely. I think that's a very great idea, uh, and um, um, and and especially these hard to break into industries, having a, a mentor who has seen more than what you have seen, both in terms of the industry as well as how an organization actually works. All of us, I think, in one way or the other, trying to grow in our own careers, right? And it's always nice to have someone who has seen it and who can either tell us what to do and more than that, tell us what not to do. Because especially in these large industries, you hit a, you hit a, a really big, like a solid ceiling that you can't break, break into. And a mentor would definitely help and uh, can, can uh, accelerate one's career. That, that's perfect, Santi. Uh, do you have a mentee already? Well, I, I work with a lot of, uh, I mean, I have quite a few employees and I work with a lot of grad students for, for some R&D work. So I don't have any uh, formal mentees, but I do mentor a, a lot of folks. Uh, during my day-to-day -day work. That sounds super reasonable, Santi. Yep. Uh, Santi, as I said, the time that I ask you to be here with me flies when you are having such a nice yes. conversation. Uh, I mentioned you that, but I really would like to appreciate your time. I am sure that for those who, are, who is watching us now, it's going to be very valuable to understand how they can break into this industry and become a data scientist. Absolutely. It's wonderful to be here, Rodrigo. Thank Thanks. you very much, Santi, and have a nice rest of the day. Thanks. Bye.